Australia has had 30 Prime Ministers since Federation in 1901, 29 men and one woman. Some held power for a long time, others were only caretakers in the position for days or weeks. Edmund Barton, a lawyer from Sydney, became leader of the new Commonwealth of Australia in 1901 as acting Prime Minister. He went on to win the nation's first election, held in late March of that year. Barton was the leader of the Protectionist Party, who supported protection for Australian industries by imposing tariffs or tax on imported goods from overseas. Intelligent and friendly, he was well liked and respected for often standing up to pressure from the British on questions of trade and defence. Barton did, however, have the nickname Toby Tosspot in the press for his love of good food and wine. And his tendency to take life easy meant he started to lose support with his colleagues in the press. He resigned from Parliament in September 1903. He was made one of the three founding judges of the High Court of Australia. For all his faults, Edmund Barton was a tireless fighter for the idea of federation and a Prime Minister capable of holding a young country together as well as a well-respected judge. Alfred Deakin served as Prime Minister on three separate occasions. A close friend of Edmund Barton, he too was a leading light in the movement for the Federation of the Commonwealth of Australia. Born in Melbourne, he became a lawyer and a talented writer, contributing articles to the Age newspaper. He joined Barton in the caretaker government in 1901 as Attorney General, the position he kept after being elected to the first parliament as part of the protectionist government later that year. He became Prime Minister in 1903 when Barton resigned, and again in 1905 and finally in 1909. A key figure in early Australian politics, he is known for his polite and courteous manner, his drive and energy, as well as being one of the country's finest ever public speakers. Although he governed at times with the support of Labour, he laid the groundwork for later conservative political movements that helped set up the pattern of conservative coalitions versus Labour that still exists today. John Watson was born in Chile, as his English parents were immigrating to New Zealand. He grew up in New Zealand, moving to Sydney when he was 19 years old. Working in the printing trade, he became a qualified typesetter and joined the union. Watson went on to lead the trade and labour movement in New South Wales. Elected into the first Australian Parliament, he led the newly formed Labour Party. His and Labour's support gave government to the protectionists under Barton. When he became Prime Minister in 1904 with the support of non-Labour members of Parliament, he became not only Australia's, but the world's first Labour national leader. Only Prime Minister for four months, he continued to be an important figure behind the scenes. Governments could not form without his support. George Reid was leader of the Free Trade Party and had been elected to the first Commonwealth Parliament. He had been Premier of New South Wales and was a witty but aggressive campaigner, often making enemies not just of his opponents. Reid had a long-standing feud with Alfred Deakin. After leading the opposition for six years, he became Prime Minister in August 1904. He tried to form a coalition to keep the Labour Party out of power, but Reid's and Deakin's dislike of each other made working together impossible. His government collapsed in July 1905. Although not remembered fondly as a national leader, he did important work as Premier of New South Wales by expanding public education and libraries. He became Australia's first High Commissioner to London in 1910. Andrew Fisher was Prime Minister on three separate occasions. Fisher was a coal miner from Scotland who migrated to Queensland in 1885. Elected to the first Commonwealth Parliament in 1901 after being an official with the Miners' Union. Fisher had been Trade Minister in Watson's first Labour government. Although he had differences with Watson, he stayed loyal and was rewarded with the leadership of the Labour Party when Watson resigned. Fisher took the Labour Party into the 1910 elections. Labour, under Fisher, won a majority in its own right in both Houses of Parliament, the first government to be able to govern for a full three-year term. A humble and quiet man, 
Fisher's governments were remembered as being socially reforming and nation building. His governments established the Commonwealth Bank, started building the national capital, and a railway linking Western Australia with the rest of the nation, as well as expanding the age and disability pensions.